Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's video we're going to be doing a quick training on VRF systems and specifically we're going to be testing a bridge diode. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a VRF systems training. Specifically, you're gonna learn how to test a bridge diode. In front of us, we have a converter board that I pulled out of an LG Multi-V4 system. Specifically, it is a heat pump, but even in more detail, it is a heat recovery system. For commercial LG HVAC systems, specifically the LG Multi-V line, you're going to find the bridge diode built into the converter board. This is the converter board itself, but specifically this area right here is our bridge diode. This piece itself is our bridge diode, where if you take off the screws, you can remove it from the board. So you can replace the bridge diode without actually replacing the converter board itself. Here's another angle of our bridge diode. This piece underneath here is actually a heat sink. And then above is the bridge diode itself. It looks like the manufacturer is Sanrex and the model number is DF50AA160. I zoomed in so you guys can get a better look at this tag. If you look on the bottom right, you can see the electrical diagram for it. Here we have another view of the bridge diode and if you would wanna take out the bridge diode, you would take out these five screws. One, two, three, four, five, and this can separate and can be replaced. In VRF systems, we have DC compressors with an AC supply voltage. And in simple terms, what's going on with this bridge diode, it converts AC alternating current into DC direct current. To test this bridge diode, we're gonna focus on the five terminals that is connected to the bridge diode. We have three here. These are labeled as R, S, and T. And on the right side, we have two terminals, a N for negative and P for positive. Let's begin with our testing. First things first is always safety. What you're gonna wanna do in a real life application is turn the power off and I'd give it five minutes and specifically in this kind of system, so everything can de-energize. Keep in mind, this is not like your regular AC, HVAC system. Next, what we would do is I would isolate the wiring for this bridge diode. And because so, we're not gonna get any feedbacks. You definitely don't want any feedbacks. You wanna get an accurate reading here. So I would take off the wires. Once we are safe with the power off and the board is isolated, so we do not have any false readings, we can begin testing. I'm gonna link in a picture so you guys can see specifically how to test this. I'm just gonna quickly go over what we're gonna do in our test so you guys get a better understanding. So in this case, you're gonna need a meter that reads diode. Then we're gonna to have to actually make sure we have the proper placement with our leads. You're gonna have a red and a black lead coming from your meter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the black lead on positive and then we're gonna check with our red lead R, S, T. So we're gonna check between P and R, P and S, and P and T. Then we're gonna switch our leads and keep our red terminal, our red lead on negative. From negative, we're gonna check between RST as well with the black on the RST. So N to R, N to S, and N to T. This is the field piece SC260, and we're gonna to wanna to set our meter to diode, which is the second function below MFD. Looks like an arrow to the right with a positive symbol. I'm gonna turn on the light, and let's select the right function. It's gonna be this one with the symbol on the bottom. When conducting our test, we're gonna want a measured value of 0.38 volts to 0.7 volts, and that's the key. So we're gonna take our black lead from the meter and place it on positive. 
and then we'll check between RST with the red lead. So between positive and R, we have 0.46, positive and S, 0.46, and then positive and T, we have 0.46. We are in the 0.38 to 0.7 volt range, and that checks out as good. Next, we're going to want the same readings, except we're going to reverse our leads. We're going to use our reference point with the red lead on N for negative. And then we're going to use the black lead to check between R, S, T. So between N and R, we have 0.46. N and S, we have 0.46. And then between N and T, we have 0.46. And this also checks out as good. 0.38 to 0.7 volts is the measurement you're going to be looking for specifically with LG HVAC systems. The same test will apply pretty much to any system, but the measured value of 0.38 to 0.7 might differ with different manufacturers, so always do your due diligence and confirm before making any proper evaluations. I'm going to take off the bridge diode itself so you guys can see and get a better look at the component itself. Here's a closer look at our bridge diode itself. It is this black piece here. But as you can see, we have two screws holding the heat sink in the back together. I do not want to remove that as behind this we have thermal paste, which I honestly don't want to tamper with as this is a brand new part. But I would like you guys to see a closer look. And here it is. There you have it. That is how you test a bridge diode in an HVAC system. If anyone is interested in me going into further detail on how a bridge diode works, please leave a comment below as I can make a more detailed video on that specifically. But for now, we're going to wrap it up. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe so I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time. Thank you.